I'm Ed. And I'm Barb. And, and we're, we're the Streeters. Streeters. Welcome to the RDRV live Q&A tonight where we attempt to answer your questions about stained glass. That's right, Barb. It's Monday night, the 22nd, and right before Thanksgiving. Happy Thanksgiving, everybody. Glad to see you're here tonight. Thanks for tuning in. We're here to answer all your questions about glass or stained glass or just glass in general. Hi, everyone. Um, how is the signal tonight? It should be it should be good. Uh, I hope it is. Yep. It's supposed to be fixed. We're supposed to have a good signal tonight and from here on out. So we hope that we do. And uh, so we're just checking in. Give us a feedback on our signal, please. We'll just wait a few minutes for everyone to get here. I hope everyone's ready for Thanksgiving. I've been spending the week cleaning and cooking and oh, ordering okay. food. And, <laughs> and we're getting ready for the grandchildren to come and our daughter and son-in-law. We're so looking forward to that. Yeah. Gives me inspiration to get my house, get all, get rid of all the dust bunnies. Okay. <laughs> all the dust bunnies. <laughs> Hi, everyone. Hi, everyone. Happy Thanksgiving. Yeah, hey. Ray's here. CM's here. Kathy Roberts is here. Renee. Renee was here first. Hey, everyone. Happy Thanksgiving. Yeah, happy Thanksgiving, Ray. We got your uh, got your envelope today. Anyone that's ordered anything uh, you ordered last week, everything shipped. You ordered um, after Friday. Um, we'll try and get it out, but it's probably going to be after Thanksgiving. We'll get it out, but you'll get it after Thanksgiving. Yeah, it's sure. just, you know, how the services are during so the holidays. We're boxing things up and uh, out should the door have it they out. Go. <laughs> <laughs> out the door they're going. Um, so do we have any questions? Anyone have any questions or problems they're working on? Um, Anybody getting ready to eat for a show? Uh, maybe between Christmas, Thanksgiving and Christmas. Anybody got a show going on? Uh, Checking in on Ray. Want to see how that lamp is coming? 950 pieces. Can't mm -hmm. wait to see that bad boy. And we had people that were uh, going to shows. And um, hello. Oh, Linda's here from Maryland. Ray said no rush. Yeah. Um, I think we just got that today. in the mail. Today. Today? Was it today? No. Maybe it was yesterday. Yesterday. Yeah. It what was on was my yesterday? desk this Yesterday morning. was Sunday. We got it Saturday. Got it Saturday. And so it's all boxed up. We just will ship it uh, tomorrow afternoon. But you probably, you know, get it after Thanksgiving. I would think. Yeah. And I think we have a couple pair of pliers going out. And so everything's uh, ready to go. Yeah, so we appreciate you guys. Thank you so purchasing much. Purchasing our we little merch it, yes. that we have, what little bit of merch that we do have. We appreciate you purchasing it. <laughs> yeah, we, we try to make our merchandise useful, right? Yeah. It's something you can actually use. So we appreciate it. Yeah. So, um, yeah, we're kind of getting ready for the holidays, winding down for winding up to cook. Long <laughs> enough to cook. Wednesday, we we are finishing up our educational display about the Live Oak Project at uh, the gardens. And so we're looking forward to that because opening night is Friday night for the NOTC, which is Nights of a Thousand Candles. And, uh, you know, they'll be seeing 10,000 people a night. Woo! That's a lot of I think people, they limit it. It's yeah. Oh, they do limit it to seventy five hundred. Yeah, that's what it is. Kathy wants to know: Do you wash your lead windows or just clean and polish? I clean and polish. By the time you get done polishing, and especially if you use a little bit of sawdust rather than whiting, don't that whiting is too dusty. But sawdust, you it, at the, the very very end. At the very very end, the sawdust. You know you. Spray the window down with glass cleaner, get all the excess flux off of it and everything, and then putty it and polish it. And out the door it goes, Kathy. Yeah. So uh, we have a, a video that has that finishing has process on it. Yeah. On it. And it, is it in the last? No. We have another one coming up. That will be putty. And now, this week, we will not have a video. Yeah, we're going to take a little time off. And I'm we're sure taking a week can... off. 
We have some new equipment that's coming in. We got to get this everything redone. So it takes a couple of days to tear it down and put it back up. Yeah, so we'll be we'll be busy doing that, but we'll be also taking some time taking off. Taking some time off, but we'll be back live on Monday night at seven o'clock. You can believe that. Oh, Ray, congratulations, because that's just exactly what you wanted, wasn't it? So that's perfect. Congratulations. Uh, Ray said that he just got a request for a lamp from his doctor. Awesome. 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 Now the wheels are turning, my friend. Good deal. That's awesome. So that's good. Um, so he'll send you some pictures of the progress on the lamp. Now, did we answer about? Okay about washing the window yeah and if you have restoration windows uh same thing i mean you're you would um we usually wash them with distilled water well you you definitely have to be careful on painted glass uh when restoring a window because you do have to use distilled water the stuff that we drink today will probably take the paint off of <laughs> Off of the what painting. are you talking about? But, the city water? Yeah, but you don't you don't know how Filtered the paintings water. <laughs> were fired. Okay. Yeah. So you don't know if, know if they were low temp, you know, 850, or if they were high temp at 13, 12 or 1300 degrees. So it's always best, always to clean old windows with paintings in them with distilled water. So the next video is going to be an easy stained glass project. So if you're doing, if you live near the river and kayaking is big in your area. Or the ocean. Or the yeah. ocean. Um, we've got a cute little, the kayak um, stained glass. So we'll have the little pattern and we're doing a quick video on that. And you can make 10 of those in no time. So we'll show you the quick way to get them done. No, we make 10 at a time. We, we make, make 10 at a time. It's a fun project. You can do them, you know, it's easy, but. And it just oh. hangs, you know, in the light. We'll show you the quick way to, to do it and everything. Should be a fun video. Yeah, and it makes a great gift for those of you that have friends at Kiwak. And uh, and you can take it and make it your own. I mean, it's the simple, it's the beginning. I mean, you can make it as... And we will have the pattern online. It'll it'll be for sale, but that's just a simple way for us to make 99 a, Yeah, for, make a little bit of a... Of right. A, yeah, not much, but anyway, it all helps. Every little bit helps Oh, because, um, you know, Barb just got her new iMac today. And uh, thanks to y'all for uh, purchasing our merch and everything, we're able to do that. So great. Thanks a lot. And our... Uh, now I can edit without everything crashing. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, you know, we have to make Barb's job easier. Um, it uses so much memory. Yeah, so, it's well. just like boom, boom, boom. So... So now, anyway, we were able to get that before they ran out of them at Christmas time because we knew that was going to happen. But the only reason that we could get that new iMac is because of you guys. And thank you very much. We appreciate it. Yes. Thank you so much. It's going to make our job so much easier. Um, Denver wants to know what to use for the top of the light box and what thickness. Uh, Denver, I would use, well, depending on the size. And Karen. But yeah, both of <laughs> you guys. The, what you want to do is use, I, uh, I have I have three sixteenths tempered glass on my light box. And I use a, a what's called a pattern 62, three sixteenths tempered glass. And you'll find the tempered glass, you want to use tempered because you don't want to put your hand through it. But yeah, three sixteenths, you know, and if you're going any bigger, the, if you're going like three foot by four foot Denver, just go ahead and, and go the extra thickness and get quarter inch. And uh, put a, and, well, he'll have a bar. Yeah, but quarter inch will lay flat. Yeah, quarter. you want that quarter inch. You want your glass to lay flat, and you want mm -hmm. it to lay flat on the edge, too. You don't want any humpty doos or anywhere for little little slivers to stick up so when you drag your hand across of them, it yeah. just rips you apart. Yeah, nice and flat. And, yeah. Um, yeah. Can't wait to see that project, Denver. But, yeah, quarter inch. Quarter inch um, would be the best. Yeah, tempered, but tempered glass for sure. Eighth inch is just going to be too thin to work off. So of. build your box first, and then measure it and get the tempered. Because once it's tempered, you can't, you can't budge the, yeah. you can't change the measurements. So that's what he, what you got. Yeah, and you know, tempering the glass makes it ninety percent stronger. Barbara. Wow, 
That's a lot. Yeah, it so is. you can lean on it or you can sit on it. Really? Yeah, really. that's right. Put it between two benches and sit on it in the middle and bounce up and down. Magali's here. Hey, don't do that. Good to don't, see. I don't, don't do that. that. <laughs> Please. That could Nobody be a disaster. Does. Magali's here. She just said she's a little late. That's okay. Late, it's good to see here. you. Happy Thanksgiving. Happy to you. Thanksgiving, everyone. Um, so, do we have any more questions? Ed and I have an appointment tonight at what time, honey? 8 30. 8 30? Yeah, so, it'll take I us mean, about a half hour to get where we're going. So, so we're going to be gone by 8 tonight. And we'll let you guys go by 8. But if you have any questions, if you have any questions, let us or know. Or thoughts. Or discoveries. Yeah. Um, I know that a lot of you, well, a few of you that I know are active in the different uh, boards on Facebook. And a lot of good questions come up. And uh, Karen was looking for, and you may have the same question. What can you use for a board to work on? Oh, yeah. So, I mean, there's a lot of options. And it depends on how portable you need to be. Right. But, you know, so, I found, Barb, teaching classes over the years for that individual person to work on a board by themselves. The best thing that I found to use is a ceiling tile and work and just flip it over and work on the back side. You can then you can use tacks, you know, with with heads on them, tacks to hold your project in in place. And. It won't burn and it makes it very simple uh, to, you know, just be able to use it and not have to uh, worry about being on a piece of plastic or something like that. So little 24 inch square ceiling tile, a box of five of them at Lowe's is probably $15. So, uh, or that's how they used to be inexpensive, right? Mark? What's that? The ceiling, ceiling tile? Tiles. Uh, well, the, the problem was that came up was that they only sell them by the box. So you'd have to buy a whole box, but perhaps you can find someone that's been, you know, renovating or, you know, restoring something and they have some, but yeah. don't use asbestos, old asbestos no, tiles or anything you can tell like the ceiling that. Tiles. And I, I, you know, I don't even know what they're, they're made of cellulose or something like that and prep compressed, but they are really good to work sun catchers and small projects on so not lead but copper foil okay yeah and then the next size up if you're doing little panels would be just to cut your ply if you need it portable cut your plywood the size of what most of your panels are yeah, otherwise yeah. work on a plywood top well you know because we're building two small tabletops for our project our live oak educational project at the gardens and uh, so we did one two foot by four foot and we did another tabletop uh, to display uh, glass and things like that on. We did that at uh, three foot by four foot. So we have an eight square foot tabletop and a 12 foot square, 12 square foot tabletop going in down at the garden to display the educational portion of the project. Yeah, it should. We will get pictures of that and share it with you. Um, Kathy said if you can catch some of the hospital or doctors, you know what? I can show this. If you catch some of the uh, hospital or doctors changing out x-ray lights, they make great light boxes. And then you just put your awesome. temper. Yeah. Anytime you find somebody remodeling or renovating, I'm not telling you to go dumpster diving, but you know what? Um, I would almost venture to say that I picked my fluorescent lights up on a job 25 years ago i would think yeah. i know i didn't buy them new because they were really expensive back then yeah we never bought anything new um renee says she finally finished a few of her stained glass pieces and wondered if she could send a few pics for constructive criticism please do so you'll want to send those to well send a no go to, to the bar, website right? yeah go to the website first and send us a note through the website and tell us what you want to do. And then one of us will contact you with a, an email not, that you can send to. Yeah. Okay. That's it's easier, the easiest yeah. way. Or or you can go in to the YouTube uh, channel and I believe there's a an email there. And that's secure too. If you click on it from there. Um, yeah, you can you can send them. 
We just don't put that on here. No, uh, <laughs> no. Because there's a more secure way to. Yeah, there's it. a more secure way to do it, and I, you know, I, I don't check my email every single day and and uh, things like that. Yeah, if, most you, of what if comes you go to, to the website and send it to me, I'll I'll get it. I'll see it. It it flags it. Right. That's yeah. easy. Most of what comes and I'll to me send it to him so. if it's his. Okay. Uh, let's see. Board. Yeah, homocyte board. I guess you could call it that. It's just a. You don't want to use the foam insulation yeah. board because that burns and melts, and that is just nasty. But but a ceiling tiles or a homocyte builder, just something that's not going to smoke or burn yeah. and is easily portable. Yeah. And remember, if you have to stop in the middle of your project, cover it up so it doesn't oxidize. Yeah. I know, Kathy, that the spell check is a real pain in the... Mm -mm -mm. <laughs> I, I was driving me crazy last week. Driving me crazy. Oh, oh, okay, so Karen said that Denver's making a uh, light box out of recycled LED flat panel TV. Okay. That will be cool. Okay. What in the world is going on in the upstate, girl? <laughs> <laughs> oh, that's awesome. Okay. Is it cold up there? Everyone's it's supposed cold to be really now. cold tonight. Yeah, it's going to be cold up there. It's supposed to get 31. 31 here tonight. So. That's for here. This is very unusual weather. Some of you on the on the screen here have, have snow or have it coming, and they're predicting like 50-mile-an-hour winds tomorrow when it starts breaking through up your way. Uh, and some of are they getting that cold weather in Florida? Uh, I don't think it's going to go down quite that oh, far, okay. but it may. But you know, y'all, this evening before it got dark, as the sun was setting, we could actually see the front coming out of the west to us. And you, I mean, you could see it. You know, it was, it was cold behind it. It was beautiful, but it you know, beautiful. it was cold behind it. Yep, it, it was, was cold. Okay, guys, got any questions or comments or let's see. Wow. Okay. 29 degrees in Pittsburgh. Wow. Linda said it's going to be lustry up there as well. Yeah. Um, I was thinking about my grandson in Chicago. Oh, wow. <laughs> Karen said they have plenty of wood. Oh, that's good. That's yes. Good. Well, we're gonna we're gonna load the yeah we're gonna make sure we take plenty of wood with us when we come up for Christmas, um, so yeah. we can enjoy the fire pit outside. Yeah, we're making progress. Yeah, so happy. Okay. Oh, can't wait. All right. So yeah, this is a wonderful time of year. It's a busy time of year for Barb and I, and. Uh, don't forget that our online store is open now for your holiday shopping. <laughs> and uh, I know I sound like a broken record, but yeah, I do want to let you know that that the, the store is open and the inventory is Here, I'll uh, do this for is you. up and so that you can tell for exactly. Blown glass ornaments. There you yeah, go. Our honey. blown glass ornaments. There you go. And um, they're all made right here by Barb and I. Yeah. So if you have that one, you know, that one, even if it's just that one special person that you, that loves handmade, like I think all of us do this, we're hopefully maybe your outlet for what you're looking for. Yeah, we have a, the store is getting stocked up more and more every day. So, you know, we, uh, yeah. we're filling orders, shipping things out every day. So, uh, yeah. now what was I looking? For there, I, don't I was know. looking for something. So everything that we ship usually comes U.S. Post Office. Thank you, Linda. So you can keep an Check eye out. out on that for you. And uh, okay, just a quick thank you too, Joey. Joey's here. Yeah, he was here a little bit ago. Oh, okay. Hey, Joey, I missed you. Um, Magali has a question. Okay, let's go. When I okay, let's I'll put it up here for you. When I score my glass, then pull it apart, it's not a clean cut. 
and you can see slivers on the glass. What am I doing wrong? Okay, Magali, it sounds like, and I, I, I looked at a picture that you sent, and but it sounds to me, okay, it sounds to me that uh, one of two things have happened. Either the wheel on your cutter is not rotating, okay, and you're just skimming across the top of the glass because that'll cause it to happen exactly what's happening. The other thing is, is that that glass isn't annealed really well. And as you're scoring it, it's, it sounds like, and you may have, if you didn't change the head on your cutter, you may be pushing too hard for that particular glass if it's um, rooster tailing or flaking. But it sounds to me like, honey, uh, Magali, it may be that your cutter head is, uh, is shot if it does it on more than just that one piece of glass. If it's just that particular glass that it's happening on, it sounds to me like there's something going on with the texture in the glass that's pushing you sideways and you're dragging rather than rolling. Is you that right? The cleaner. Oh yeah. So you know what? I could do that when we get to the, to where we're going. Okay. Well, um, that's a great idea, Barb. That's even better than the idea I had earlier. What's that? I'll show well, them how okay. to do their okay. cutter. So glass chat's coming up. Hey, everybody. That's perfect. So you're going to answer her answer. Magali's well, I'm going to show okay. her how to what I think may be the problem. OK, because it's happened to me more than once over the years. So our tool tonight is. Ed's glass cutter. OK, this glass cutter. OK, it, you can see it's it was worn. silver. Right? You can tell. Yeah, you can tell that I I am left handed, but. We'll also use my right hand to cut glass. But what I want to tell you is everybody sees that little that little gap that's below your cutter wheel, okay? If you'll take a straight pin, a, you know, that you would stick in your laundry or something, and go right underneath your wheel and push that through and back through again, take a look at the junk that comes out of that, okay? That very well could be the problem, Magali. So try that because a little straight pin under the wheel of your cutter, will there's some dust in there. And I keep mine in my pocket a lot because I'm always, you know, it's in my pocket, okay? If my pants are on, I got my glass cutter. And so try that. There might be some dirt in there. And then if y'all remember, our glass this week is awesome because... Last week when I showed you some samples, I showed you Kokomo 35. And I said to you, I am in search thereof. And um, I finally, after talking to a couple of suppliers, I finally went directly, directly to the manufacturer. And I had no idea that I could do this. And I've been doing this a long time but I had no idea that I could just buy one sheet from the manufacturer. And you know what? That was the only sheet they had. So let me show you what this Kokomo 35 looks like in a half a sheet. My, our customer, Barbara, is going to be beside themselves because we found the glass to match their stained glass window. And I think someone on here, I think someone here told us to, that just to call, call Kokomo, that they will talk to us. And you know I'm not what? sure who that was, but thank you. Thank you, because I had no idea. And you're right. I talked with a gentleman named John who was in charge, who had access to the entire warehouse of inventory of Kokomo. The guy's awesome. And yeah, I paid retail for it. But you know what? When you're only buying one sheet at a time, tough. This is a beautiful glass. We're just happy to be able to We're get just it. happy to be able to get it for our customer. So oh, it looks good. It here. looks really good here. Now I'm going to pop a light behind it, but I'm going to try not to make it a hot light so you can kind of see what's happening here. See yeah, it? it's a little bit hot, but it, you can kind of see that it's a little bit. There you go. How's that, bar? Yeah, that's pretty good. It's a little bit hot. Now this color, I'm not, I'm not even sure what color it is other than amber, and it's got like a mauve. 
Now I'm going to well, tell you all this. Would be the color, yes. John told me this was the only sheet that they had in the warehouse, and it's been back there for a long period of time. <laughs> the only sheet in the warehouse, y'all. And guess what? He, Ed's got it. He found it. I found it. And he what was, is the number and the name again? That is a Kokomo 35, and it is a opal, and it is also a is cat's paw granite. Oh, it's a cat's paw granite. It's a cat's paw granite. Kind of reminds me of that green that we had for the oak tree project. So Would that be a CPG? Yes. Okay. That would be a CPG. K35 CPG. There you go. Makes me smile. I'm going to tell you a little story about this window. The cut When the customer came in and dropped it off, the frame was falling apart. I picked it up. The window almost fell out of the frame. He says to me, Mr. Streeter, when you get done fixing this window, I still want to see the BB hole in that piece of glass right there. I said, well, that's kind of unusual request. He said, yeah. He said, but you know, when my wife and I got married 79 years ago, that BB hole was in that window. I said, you know what? I'm going to make sure that it's still in that window when you pick it up. So anyway. So, but he has other pieces he's going to have. Oh, yeah. But there's like five that, other pieces. The but customer wants to leave that BB hole. He wants that. Sweet? And you know what? That is just like awesome because, you know, of course, his spouse is no longer with us. And that is a memory that he will cherish forever and has cherished forever, as a matter of fact, Barb. Mm -hmm. Yeah. You know, I have some things like that. You do. I do. You're so sweet. Okay. Ray, how can how can we tell if we need a new cutter, even if we're using oil and proper pressure? If you do that, you won't need a new cutter. Because initially, when you bought your cutter, you invested that $32 or $36 or $40 in your glass cutter. And unless you drop it on the concrete, I've found over the years, you really can't wear it out. Right. You can't wear it out. You drop it, the head of it on the concrete. And then you might as well just throw it away. Or if you use it on glass that's really dirty. But I want you to know is when your cutter falls because of the little brass mm -hmm. ball at the end of it, guess where it falls? Right on the brass ball. It never falls. Cut her head down. But it Unless can. it's not high enough to give it time to flip over like a cat. You know what I'm talking about? <laughs> yeah. And it'll skip. And it'll skip. It'll go. And you can see it. But the easiest way to see it is to not use oil. And do it on clear glass and you'll see it. Okay. So that's a good way to test it. Just dry it. Oh, yeah, kind oh of. excuse me. My, uh, my hip just kind of did a. A pop and it hurt, so I had to stand up. Thank you. Ed's Sorry. going to the doctor on Wednesday. That's one reason we won't be uploading the video on Wednesday because he has a doctor's appointment and we'll be in there a while and uh, then we'll find out hopefully when he's going to have his hip replaced. So big things happening. Yeah, here I just want a little bit of relief from the pain for the holidays. So I just, I just want a little bit of relief. Um, I don't think it'll be done the before holidays. the holidays. No, I just want some relief. Well, he's getting better. I'm getting better. Yeah. I'm not as grouchy as I was before. I guess I'm getting used to it. As pain. you were once before. Yeah. You're okay. You're not grouchy. You're I'm not, not gr grouchy. So, hey, thanks for tuning in for Glass Chat tonight. And uh, that little that little trick, believe it or not, y'all, that little trick, uh, sticking a pin through the bottom of your glass cutter and getting all that junk out of there. Now, there is a wick in there, and the wick's not going to move. But if you get that junk in there, and you know, it's just junk. If you're, it could be dust. It could be on dust. Your you're glass. using oil. It could be dirt on your glass. Uh, some glass, they throw desiccant on it so that they slide between one another without scratching it. All you got to do is pick up. And I, that's my problem in this cutter is uh, the, the big sheets of glass I cut in the back are have desiccant on them to keep them from uh, sticking together. And it makes them slide a lot easier so you can pull them out of the racks. But we usually clean our stained glass before we start cutting it. Yeah, I would say clean your clean your glass every time before you cut it and see how that works. Yeah. Your most important tool. Yeah. 
Well, your most important tool is your, yeah, is your glass cutter. And what I found most of the time, if the glass is breaking incorrectly, it's usually not the cutter. It's probably the cut E. Well, that's really encouraging. Come on, everybody. <laughs> Let's get it. Let's cut some glass. Well, you cut some glass for us. I can cut some glass. Oh, you know what I meant to bring? I'm going to show y'all. Magic gonna, marker. Oh, uh, well, I'm going to cut a piece of glass and show y'all the reason that you should have two pair of grousing pliers. How about that? So we're going to score it once. And I can do this. We'll do this by hand and just pick it up. Okay. Okay. That's easy. Anybody can do that. But when you take a piece of glass that's narrower, you hear that? Boy, just driving right through there. You take a piece of glass that's too narrow for your running pliers to pull. So we're going to take a grousing plier here and a grousing plier here. I'm going to pick these up. Let you see them, two pair of grousing pliers, down and away. So just grab another pair of grousing pliers next time you see a pair on sale or something. Having two pair of grousing pliers in your toolbox, y'all, or at your table while you're cutting glass yeah, is a great, gives that. it gives you that, it, it actually it gives you that advantage over the product that you're working with. Okay, Magali said, I think it's my cutting. I'm still sometimes unsure how much pressure to use on certain glass, especially texture. Answer that because we Magali, talked about that. She yeah, may have missed it. We talked about that, and, and it's true. You may have missed it. But just because the glass is textured, use the same pressure that you use on cutting your other glass. Don't change the pressure on it. Your pressure in your hand should be the same start to finish. Okay. Same pressure, different colors rolling across it, but your pressure should be the same whether, whether the glass is uh, textured or not. Okay. Same pressure. And I working on the, on the Oak tree project, I had many different textures of glasses. Some of them were over a quarter of an inch thick. And I found out, actually, if I gave it less pressure on the textured glasses, it broke better for me, and I got more bang for my buck out of that textured glass. But yeah. definitely no more pressure. If anything, less pressure. For texture. For textured glass. And that's a proven fact, y'all. Yeah, we, we had a, a someone come on and they had I the can't same remember, problem. The they, same they problem and that we were talking to him and he, they tried it and it, and and it, it worked, worked for him. So. Um, uh, Ray said, you know, maybe she needs a new cutter. Well, it's very possible, but um, a lot of times... If you're pushing too hard on your glass is when you get rooster tails or flakes. And, you know, a simple, a simple thing to if you want to see what, if you want to see the gold and red glass, run your glass cutter, really push down really hard for about two inches and take your glass cutter up and watch the gold come to the surface and start flaking. Okay. This is interesting. Uh, Kathy, I guess she's the one that, Kathy, I guess you're the one that told us. To yeah, go thanks, ahead and call Kathy. Kathy. It's Kokomo. awesome. I I'm appreciate not it. Sure, but if you did, thank you. Um, Kokomo sells off batch colors also. You buy all you need. You can never order more. And you can look on the website and see what their off batch is, which is interesting because if you're working on a project, special project and you want something special for you. Something real special. Right. But <laughs> you have to do it with... That's that awesome. in mind. Well, that thank you, you because can't get more. Yes. I, we we made a new friend in John, the the their, the Kokomo uh, gentleman who was uh, just so helpful, trying to helping me find. And the, you know, let me tell you all something: is that night that I ordered that K thirty five, I woke up thinking I ordered K thirteen because I had the gentleman's lamp on my mind that needed the K thirteen. And I thought to myself, how am I going to tell Barbara I just spent $100, $100 on a 
on the wrong class. You know, you wouldn't even tell me. <laughs> How am I supposed to know? Oh, uh, that wouldn't be funny, y'all. Let me tell you, it wouldn't be funny at all. But anyway, it worked out because uh, I checked my confirmation, looked at the purchase order, and sure enough, it was K35. So I was very excited. Well, now what lamp were you, did you? We Get had a gentleman customer. that was on last week and, and uh, on our website, and he was repairing a lamp. Oh, we sent it to you? Yeah, and he sent a picture. And, and you sent and, him to Yeah, because it was sunshine. an amber. I sent him the sunshine. Yeah, it was a, yeah. a green and amber. It was a either a 99 or a 59 or a, uh, you know, one of those. Yeah, that's cool. 13, 15, 14. I really want to go see Kokomo Glass and... All the glass factories in the U S one day. I think that would be fun trips. I think it would be awesome. And I have a standing invitation from Paul up at Wismac to, to come up and see the factory, take a tour. And uh, I think it, he was talking about, because him and his wife were in here right after the COVID started last year. And um, I was, Hey, I was like a kid in a candy factory. I had to call Barbara after they left and tell her who was just in the shop. It was amazing. And, you know, we've been using their glass for 40 years. And, uh, you know, I think Artie could take a stand a trip up the mountains to uh, Payton City. Okay, this is a good question. Maybe, maybe others can uh, answer this as well. Uh, Joyce says she just pulled apart two lampshades that were made with lead cane. I now have 10 pounds of old cane sitting in my shop. What do you do with all the used cane from your repair projects? What I do is I have a couple friends that fish offshore and I put it in a box. And anyone that fishes, it doesn't matter where you live, you've got fishing ponds. So check with the uh, bait and tackle shops because a lot of them make their own sinkers and they will melt that old lead down and make lead weights. Or like if you're in, uh, let's just say if you're in Wisconsin where everybody duck hunts this time of year when once the lakes freeze over and everything, uh, you need decoy weights. So any of those areas, you can upcycle that lead, just save it for them and have them come pick it up. Yeah. The other thing is, is that lead, you can recycle it because... Uh, they take batteries and batteries have lead and copper in them and lead is lead. So recycle centers, recycle centers tell you too. what yep. to do with it. You can't just throw it in the trash. Please don't. That's a good question. Thank you for asking yeah, that. Don't throw don't. your lead in the trash. Uh -uh. And don't smoke, drink or eat while you're working with it. <laughs> Ray says he dreams about his projects. Is that normal? That's completely normal. Those, my friend, are the glass fairies the visiting. Glass Right? Yeah, and any questions you have about your project will be answered in your dreams. And the next morning you'll wake up and it will just go. Uh, working have... with the glass fairies is really <laughs> fun, y'all. It really is. Yes. You know, I thought they were normal. kidding when they told me about the glass fairies, but they weren't. I'll never forget the first time I went to school and studied glass. And my teacher said, the glass fairies will come and visit you tonight. Told the whole class that. And I, I had thought, oh, she's a real hoot. And that night, I dreamed about that class. Right. I dreamed the whole time I was at school. Yeah. And uh, it's yeah. amazing. And, you know, she teaches at Syracuse University, Barb. Oh, uh, wow. Okay. Yeah, she teaches at Syracuse University. I think it's because of the, maybe the way it affects your brain, the colors and the sensory that uh, causes you to dream about it. I'm not sure, but well, and the fact it happens that, to a lot of us. The fact that you've been told your whole life, stay away from that, it'll break. Don't touch that, it'll hurt you. And be careful around it. And all of those things, glass does really well, especially the hurt part and cut you part. Hmm. But you know what? It's such an intriguing, natural thing earthly kind of thing man you can't get away from it you just can't get away from it yeah and once you understand it you want to understand more and more about it yeah so. you do i used to dream about glass when i was 
Uh, well, Barbara's relatives were all glass blowers. Yeah. So. But I used to dream about stained glass windows when I was younger and uh, never, never knew I'd be doing them. No, we, you know what? We never, I don't think either one of us ever dreamt that we would be doing glass because my, um, my grandfather and great grandfather were both were both mold makers in the steel industry out on Fells Point up in Baltimore, and uh, Barbara's relatives were glass blowers in the in the glass factories up in New Jersey. So it was kind of odd that we, you know, we were able to move into this this sphere of hot molten sand that we enjoy so much. Yep, Karen says she wakes up. And draws out her ID. And Excellent. Yes. Keep keep a pad beside your bed, y'all. This is that's awesome. Yeah, that's very good. Very good. And it'll help you in a lot of ways. Sure will. So um and then you and could also draw what you want in Denver to make you for breakfast. You want some pancakes <laughs> and some bacon and some I eggs. <laughs> Here you go, Denver. <laughs> I made you a sketch. Just last thinking night. about bacon. <laughs> Oh, my grandkids are coming and they, they're like, hey, Pop Ed, did you get any bacon for the breakfast this morning? So they, they like to see two or three pounds sitting on the counter being cooked. It's Mel's crazy. here. Hey, she Mel. dreams about the artwork, too, and she doesn't even feel the cuts now. <laughs> oh, hey, I got a simple trick for everybody about cuts on your fingers. What's that? So that you don't feel them the next day. Take a little bit of kerosene. Kerosene only. And just brush it on your cut. Just kerosene. That's all. Okay. I'm telling you. All right. I'm you telling you, so. cut little cuts like I'll that. I'll be using band aids. Heal right up. I'll be using band aids. Okay. That's old Glazer's trick. Ray I'm said, on. Denver, I'll take some flapjacks. <laughs> Denver, I'll take them. But Melanie said that she dreams about her artwork too. It's. Yeah, I guess it happens to all of us. Kathy said, if you go to Wismac, go to Blinko. Oh, yeah. So. Um, well, see, they're all kind of like right there. Um, <laughs> what, what you got Indiana, Ohio, I West Virginia. I thought about kerosene. Kerosene. Why? He doesn't want you to drink it. Don't drink it. Just, <laughs> just take a little brush and put it on your finger. I used to get cuts all the time in the commercial industry <laughs> when we were working on high rises and stuff and kerosene's. I mean, when you're cutting a couple thousand square feet of glass a day, you're bound to get a little cut or two. You put some kerosene on it, it stops it from bleeding and it, it closes it up by the next day. So, uh, and that's, you know, yeah, as they say, that's word. That's word. <laughs> that's word, man. I don't know. What are we doing? I don't Ask know, but but, you, but again, if you do have <laughs> if you do have uh, somebody that hunts in your area or owns a hunting store, you can probably donate that lead to them, and they'll melt it down and make fishing sinkers or or you know whatever. Hey, it's getting ready time to go ice fishing, so you need sinkers for that too. Yeah, I don't know. I don't know. I don't know. I remember ice fishing as a little boy, but it wasn't in South Carolina. Nope. Not in South Carolina. Kerosene on cuts. Oh, Karen says she's got to keep them fed to do all the projects. So, uh, okay. You got to fix him the flapjacks and the bacon. Oh, okay. You okay. Well, fix that's, him. A, that's, that's a fair trade, Karen. Very yeah, that's a pretty trade. good deal. Yeah. Magali's dying for a glass road trip. We are too. We got to plan one. Yeah, we should all, we should plan oh, one. Oh, Mel, your dad ice fishes? Yeah, he would love, that's, oh. he would love those. He would love those. Yeah. Christmas present. Yeah. Oh, I'm, I hadn't been ice fishing since I was about six or seven. And you know, back when I we, we used to go ice fishing, we didn't have an auger to drill a hole in the ice. What did you use? Oh, we, a we, salt. No, we used uh, a, uh, it was like a big steel bar, and we would just chop the the ice around the top. So it's up. not like the in the cartoons where you see that saw and it goes around in the circle. No, and we didn't have a house through. that we drug out on the ice with a heater in it either. <laughs> okay. <laughs> 
Oh, but we used awesome. to catch some beautiful fish. It was fun. It was a great, great, great memories um, of times with my dad. Yeah, great memories. Magali wants to know if we send a um, story, a bio with our glass piece, with our, um, like our bowls and our sculpture pieces, we usually do. Um, we haven't been sending a bio with our ornaments, but that that's a good idea. That's a little a great bio idea. Um, story. Uh, I don't do it now, but thank you for the idea. I appreciate that. And yes, I can do that. Yeah. And you know, when we, uh, when we send out our, uh, the ornament, the, the reproduction ornament that we made for the white house in 2010, when we send that ornament out, we do send a tag with that stating that it is a reproduction ornament of the ornament that we made for the White House in 2010. 2010. Yeah. Yes. That, y'all, is an honor. Let me tell you. Yeah. That is an honor to be chosen from your state to make an ornament for a tree on the white at the White House. That's like way crazy. We didn't know they had like that 15 trees. So we were in the tree. We were in the outside of the Oval Office. Right. In the West Wing lobby. Mm -hmm. So that was quite an honor. It was. And it was, ironically enough, y'all, the story about that making that ornament is the day that we were working on it. No, we had made it the day before. The next day we had classes and there were three women in there making their own Christmas ornaments. And go figure, they worked at the Treasury Department right across the street. And they let us know that it is a hoot watching them get those big trees inside the building. They take the doors down on the White House and everything. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Well, they'll, they'll show that on TV as far as the delivery, right? Yeah, and I'm talking about the big trees that go inside, too. Oh, yeah, you know, yeah. So. Um, I saw an, whoop, a YouTube video where they were melting the lead to you reuse it as their solder in their next project is this even feasible i don't know how did they how did they um how did they put it on well they have to add tin to it to make it like a to make it into solder they'll have to add more tin to it but um what was the ending that's what i want yeah to you know what that, that's really because melting lead y'all is not something you do with a uncovered face and definitely outside. not something you do inside. It has to be done outside. And it's done and in what they call a, a smelting pot. Yeah. yeah. You don't want to breathe that. That's lit. So um, you want to do it outside. Um, in a safe with area. A with a respirator. Yeah. And uh, usually people do it, you know. and Because, you know, the, melt, the lead's going to melt at like 465 it's degrees. It's a real quick process. Yeah. And then you can you cast it into molds. The other thing is, is if you're going to, if you're going to melt your own lead, make little molds of rosettes, which are upside down flowers and make little molds out of uh, refractory, carve them and then pour lead rosettes. Yeah. It takes no time and you have your own rosettes. And you have your if own you're, rosettes. If you're restoring old windows or even building new ones, they kind of make a nice little, it's like a little finishing touch. Sure they do. Mm -hmm. We have a project coming up, Barb, that if we can find them, if not, we may make our own. Oh, Joyce said that's a big no. Yeah, I would be kind of wondering what, how they, uh, after yeah. melting it, applied it. You know, in the medieval times, they they would pour their lead, you know. How did they pour it? With it being oh, melted. It, they, they let it together. They poured it, yeah. Oh, they poured it. Poured but it, it seems like it would. Uh, oh, I guess. If they're the side, okay. Yeah. I it's gotcha. almost like an epoxy window, the process. And then it probably did evolve into an epoxy window. Interesting. What's the approximate time of delivery for your glass ornaments? Um, if you go to the website, whatever's in stock will ship out. Say if you ordered it today. It would ship out on Saturday. It'll leave here Saturday by It'll noon. It'll leave here Saturday um, by U.S. mail. Yeah. yeah. By we, noon. We can't guarantee Christmas delivery after the 15th of December, y'all. So that's what we do. 
the orders that we get in like from now until Friday will go out on Saturday. Yeah, because so we'll even though we're we'll taking some time trip. off, we're, we're still here. Working. Yeah, we'll pack everything up. And we'll be, you know, we'll be making ornaments fresh every day except Thanksgiving Day. So. And Wednesday. And Wednesday. She's going to the doctor. Yeah, and Wednesday. Okay. So, any more questions? But we will see you here Monday night. And we have two videos we're working on. So we're we're trying to get to everything. Yeah, we want to get that kayak video up for you. And I've got to, I've got to, I've got to do the pattern so that it's available online to you and you know on our website. And uh, I just want to say thank you to everybody that participates in the in uh, in everything that we do, all the comments, all the likes, all the sharing. We really do appreciate it. Our channel is growing and growing, and um, I'm I'm really proud of what Ed's been doing. I'm pr proud he of this is, one here. <laughs> <laughs> he has ju he just is phenomenal. So thank you, Ed. Oh, thank, thank you, Barb. you guys. I really appreciate y'all. Okay, Magali's on the computer now. Um, we love you guys. I mean, yeah, it's I mean, we really, really been did. phenomenal and, and we, great things coming. I mean, I, what we're working for is going to happen. It, it's going to take a little while, but it's going to happen. So, well, I didn't think we'd have an iMac this soon either, but we got one. So thank y'all very much. We but everything it. seems to be coming together. They say it takes two and a half years to really build your channel. We're one year in and it's better than we even imagined. And, um, so thank you. Yeah, thank you. And it's it's because of you guys. Um, and the fact that that so many of you just enjoy learning at your own speed. Mm -hmm. Okay. And that's what our videos are for. But when you have those tough questions, thank or you. if you just want to say hello and all that, that's what these Monday nights are for. So don't forget to get us some questions. You know, yeah. this year's so different, y'all. We're we're actually able to see our family members and maybe hug I'm so them. So excited. And, uh, and so I know you all are too. Yeah, so. we know y'all. So um that is that is all I have to say. I, I am just thrilled to uh share that information. I mean, but uh it's just really good. It it's really, really is. good. So we'll take some pictures while we're um I guess Wednesday while we're installing the educational portion of the yeah, live I'll oak project, some, right? I'll have some of the oak tree project. Um, I, you know, I'll, I'll we won't do be able the to put them up till after Christmas, how... though, right? What the live the educational project for after for the Christmas holiday thing at the live? Yeah, oak. we can't share too much. That I don't want to take away from their uh, their ticket thing, sales, but I'll have all that all that in another video coming. Right, up. right. Okay. Well, we missed, I missed art school too. Actually, you know, my fifth grade teacher lives about a mile from here and she used to send notes home to my mom and dad that Eddie likes to doodle in class. I understand that. And I did. However, about, uh, I guess I was about 20, almost 30 years old, right? Mm -hmm. She came walking into the new building that we just built right across the street from a warehouse that her and her husband own. And uh, they were, you know, had a, a uh, what was that? A, uh, anyway. So tobacco she came up, warehouse. Yeah, it was an old tobacco warehouse. So anyway, she walked across the street and came in and I recognized her. He had a crush on her. And she at that time, cute. yeah, and that's hey, just just a quick little <laughs> shout little out to kid. my buddy Gary in Houston. You, you had a crush on her too, and you know it. He was little. And yeah, he loved but anyway, his yeah, she was just a she was just something else. Anyway, I uh, <laughs> I introduced myself to her and told her who I was, and then she remembered me. And I wanted to, and I told her I wanted to thank her for sending those notes home about me doodling in class because now. I get paid to draw for people and it's awesome. So thanks again. 
Linda Hodges. Another thing we're thankful <laughs> for. And, yeah, that, I and, mean, I'm so thankful for a lot of things. Let me tell you. And uh, Karen said she's in Home Depot watching us. So tell the guys in Home Depot that we said hi. Yeah, and we want to be, give a big shout out to the Upstate Sheriff's Department. Hi, guys. Anderson. Anderson Sheriff's Department. Thanks for tuning in to see us. You know, Karen, she'll show you what's happening tomorrow. <laughs> <laughs> Okay, guys, I think we're going to uh, let you go and get back to your uh, your uh, turkey fixings. and uh, So everybody be safe during these holidays, please. And, uh, you, you know, up north you're getting ready to get slammed, but you're used to it. And we're getting ready to get cold down south. So Yep. Uh, Melanie said she got sent home, too. I mean, not sent home, excuse me. You got no, no <laughs> sent, sent home. home. <laughs> no. I'm sorry, Mel. I didn't mean to say that about you. <laughs> oh, Lord. I, I think I might have got sent home. <laughs> I don't know. Anyway. Yeah, well, it was encouragement because, you know, my father, um, even though my father was in the service and was a he was a jet engine specialist and he taught school and... Um, he uh, just, you know, uh, he used to draw. And one one year when we lived in Florida, when my sister was visiting my grandparents, he and I uh, did murals in my sister's room of all the Peanuts characters, including Lucy with her five cent kisses and information. So we did this on my sister's bedroom walls. And when she came home, she freaked out. And, uh, but it was just something, I think that's kind of what started everything for me. All that drawing and having fun with my dad. His uh, dad was a fun guy. Just doing all that that's stuff. That's where Ed gets all his fun from. All my fun. Yeah. So we were going to say happy Thanksgiving. Good night, everybody. We love you. Good night, everybody. Have a happy Thanksgiving. Be safe out there. Hugs. Stay Hugs safe. You. Wear your mask if you have to, but yeah. um, be safe and have fun. Remember, you're not wearing a mask because of them. You're wearing it because of you. Take care now. Take care, guys.